So this is how, like internally, how we currently work. I mean, this is of course a work in progress implementation, but I'm telling you right now in 2021, this is why, this is the way Codam playgrounds and labs and all that dynamic functionalities work. If you have taken any interactive course on Codam, by the way, which I highly recommend you should, especially from our full stack developer learning path, you know about this concept where in an interactive course on Codam, you not only just learn by watching videos, attempting quizzes, but you also practice in browser, right? Most of the courses, whether that's HTML, CSS, JavaScript, any sort of course is exactly like that where you also get to build projects and practice right within the browser without leaving your computers interface or without changing any screens or tabs because the whole IDE opens in your browser interface in this video I want to discuss how actually that works just to give you under the hood glimpse of how these complex things are actually simplified and presented to you on a simple web-based UI. If you're new here, make sure you leave a like, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon. This is free of cost and helps the channel grow. All right, so if you visit any lab on CodeDAM in any course, or if you open even open Playground on CodeDAM or attempt a project on CodeDAM, what you will see is something like the following boots up, where on the left, you would have your file-based navigation, Below you would have your terminal and in the center you would have your editor, right? And maybe like a split screen with a browser window as an iframe embedded as well. Now, the major component of all of this is actually a backend computer, and I should say like a backend container running on cloud, right? So what this web-based UI is that it's a simple UI for this container running in the backend as, as a Docker container, right? So let's discuss a little bit of how that works on CodeDAM today in this video, just to give you a sense of if you wanted to construct something like this, how would you do that on your own? So the first thing is that we need to spin up a container over here. Now there are two parts to this, spin the container and then make this container respond to some sort of API calls via outside the container or via from the browser. So make the container public in some way. So the spinning part is relatively easy. I mean, you just run docker create container command and it just spins you a new container on a physical host. This part is also relatively easy if you think about this because just what, what does it mean to make a container public? That means you need to be able to program this container somehow and you need some open ports on this container. Ports which are routable from an internet address. So if you open this area, for example, of playground, you would see that you have an actual URL you can access to browse the website, which is visible. Now this URL is something special because it allows us to get access, you know, connect internet basically to the container. So if you look at CodeDump's URL, which you get in the browser, you would see something like at the container id dash ip address dot dns dot code dam dot app and then a port number whether that's 1337 or 1338 any sort of port number here so this part here is the container id which we pass which is like a 67 length of string and this part here is the ip address of the container right so what we do is that when you start a container we dynamically route this request to this physical host as an IP address, which has Docker running, and it maps all the requests to this particular container, which is available. Now, if I want to discuss the architecture of this thing, it looks something like this. So you have, at the very end, you have a container which is running, right? This is like, a, let's say this is DC, a Docker container. Now this thing is running inside of a public, you know, a, a big computer, a, you know, probably like a huge EC2 machine something like that. This is like a small container, which is running inside this EC2 machine. And this container right here has a bunch of ports exposed, right? So it's some of its port mapped to some random port inside container on the physical host and so on. Then on this container, we have another reverse proxy process, which actually listens to connections, incoming connection. And I think I have just drawn the directions of arrow a little wrong. It should be something like this, right? Or maybe it could be the other way as well. But, you know, initially when you're getting traffic, that's that's the direction. Then finally, in front of this reverse proxy, you have your client, right? So this is you like completing a project or browsing a lab on CodeDAM. So when you visit this URL, 
The first thing which happens is that we route your address to this particular server right here, which is, you know, the information is included in the IP address. Once you hit that server, you get, you know, into that reverse proxy area on the server, which calculates which sort of container you want to, you know, just contact or communicate with, with again, with the URL part. And it also takes out the, the port number which you're trying to look at. Then it will find the associated port number on the main host, the physical host, which you're looking and it will connect you to that particular port on the physical host because this port is mapped to that another port inside the container, right? And then finally, you get routed into that container because, hey, you hit the right port, right? Which was also running on the, on the main container. So you would get a nice hello world response from Coda. So this is how, like internally, how we currently work. I mean, this is of course a work in progress implementation. This is not something we would use forever because we would obviously need to change this URL structure or URL format if you want to support more, you know, like long running processes or long running containers. But I'm telling you right now in 2021, this is why this is the way Codam playgrounds and labs and all that dynamic functionalities work. Now, the second part of the equation is how do you scale up this server right here because this server we limit it to like maximum of 10 to 20 people at max because we don't want the server's resources to be overloaded so how do you upscale this server i mean some companies some people do prefer to use solutions like kubernetes or you know some custom solutions but we currently don't use that we currently use a little bit of mix of Dynamo DBs to store the information about these multiple physical hosts. So this Dynamo DB would actually store information about all the physical hosts which are running, right? And then it will connect if there's any new client, the Dynamo DB lookup would run, it will see if there's any empty container on any physical host. If yes, it will just respond it to the client, just like in the following fashion. Like I said, if no, then it will spin up a new instance and not exactly DynamoDB, there's obviously a script here as well, which is running on the Lambda, but it will spin up a new physical host right here and it will add it to the collection and then, you know, the process repeats. So yeah, I mean, spinning slash scaling is first part. Making the container public is the next important part. And I mean, this third point is pretty much the second point itself. But yeah, I mean, a lot goes behind that two second thing that two second delay which happen when you start the lab, right? When you see that progress bar at the end, at the bottom, loading the state, or when you see that spinner in the browser, just, you know, going around and around, you should understand, you should realize that a lot has happened, a lot is happening on the back end on CodeDAM. So the next time you're building a project on CodeDAM or doing an interactive lab, you would be able to appreciate a lot that goes behind that. And I mean, this is just the theoretical stuff. In the actual practical implementation, of course, you have to like take care of a thousand more parameters. So that is pretty much it. How code dams project playground lab area works if you like this i would recommend you to just go ahead and play with this with a simple html project i mean you would probably see one example of a project on code dam on your screen right now but yeah i mean if you liked it make sure you leave a like subscribe and complete a project and complete a lab that will actually be really fun for you if you like working with new technology so that is all for this video i'm gonna see you in the next one really soon if you're still watching this video make sure you comment down in the comment section i watched this video till the end. Also, if you're not part of CodeDamp's Discord community, you're missing out a lot on events which we organize on a weekly basis to code. You already know the drill. Make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and thank you so much for watching.